Good afternoon, everybody. Brian Newbert here again from goldenblack.com, live in my box here at home. Uh, once again, the battle between um, peep yellow and white primer continues to rage behind me on the walls with the uh, official ladder of goldenblack.com's daily quarantine arbitrating there in the middle. Um, this is, of course, your goldenblack.com daily quarantine simulcast for Tuesday. I uh, don't know what date it is, 21st, whatever. Um, it's brought to you by Fox Purdue Bookstores, Purdue Federal Credit Union, 6th Street Dive Restaurant, First Source Bank, East End Grill, and the Charters Team Remaxability Plus. I want to remind you again, as always, that our friends at the 6th Street Dive in Lafayette, as well as Arnie's, Bruno's, and the Whitaker Inn in West Lafayette, all remain open uh, for carryout orders, so please keep them in mind uh, as you're looking um for provisions uh, through all of this, that's a hoity-toity word for food, um, food, or to support our local businesses, please keep them in mind. The Sixth Street Dive, Restaurant Lafayette, Arnie's literally all over the state, Bruno's in West Lafayette, and the Whitaker Inn in West Lafayette. So uh, also want to remind you once again, if you're accessing this via YouTube, please be sure to subscribe to our page. When the world starts spinning again, uh, we'll have lots of Purdue related stuff on there that you'll want to get as soon as possible. So please subscribe to our YouTube page. Uh, if you're accessing it that way, if you're listening on the podcast, please make sure you're subscribed there as well. Uh, the golden black radio for our, our post game wraps our, our Monday, uh, radio show, uh, and all the like. So the, the promotional portion is now concluded. We will get into an actual Purdue topic. Yesterday was not a good day for me in terms of egg winding up on my face, egg the color these walls used to be, or still are uh, to a certain extent. I just got done recording this thing, talking about Purdue adding Tyler Coyle uh, to their secondary and as a graduate transfer, and the graduate transfer topic got me talking about other graduate transfer related topics, at which time I suggested that the window of opportunity for Purdue to add a quarterback uh, if it's so desired, uh, which at least at one time it did. I did not know if it still did. I suggest that window of opportunity had closed. Of course, it's April. I think that was a reasonable uh, assertion to make. Um, sure enough, two hours later, Purdue adds a graduate transfer quarterback in Austin Burton from UCLA. Figured, again, I have a bunch of topics to talk about that you all have, have emailed in. Did I just pronounce y'all like that? I'm from New Jersey. I'm not supposed to do that. Anyway, um, I have a lot of topics you guys, you people, viewers, readers have emailed in, direct message, whatever it may be. It is a relatively robust list at this point, but things keep happening. So the list will get pushed down the line here, and I will talk about Austin Burton today. Uh, Austin Burton, again, a more of a dual threat type of quarterback, I think, from UCLA. Uh, played sparingly in his time there, started one game, I believe, um, but was never the guy there. Uh, Skill set wise, seems to me like a more mobile sort of, uh, again, dual threat type of player. Um, I think that's important for Purdue because I think that's the direction ultimately they want to go in in a more meaningful way. I think in the last few recruiting classes, they have looked for that true sort of dual threat guy who can be as much of a weapon running the football as throwing the football, or at least close to it. Uh, I think that can open up a lot of options offensively. I know a lot of coaches believe that when the ball never leaves the quarterback's hand, that can help you limit turnovers. And that is obviously so important nowadays. I think also the more the defense has to worry about, clearly uh, the harder you are to to defend, I think in short yardage especially, it gives you more looks, more things, more options. Uh, I think that's especially important for Purdue when you look at kind of how they struggled in short yardage running situations. The RPO, the run pass option, um, perhaps you've heard of it, um, is obviously such an important part of football uh, nowadays. It's sort of the way the game is trending. Uh, I don't know if that ultimately is what Purdue wants to do, uh, but I do know they have wanted uh, a more well-rounded sort of quarterback back there that they can use as a runner and a passer. Whether Austin Burton is that guy, time will tell, but at least from a profile perspective, he is much more David Blau, I think, than he is Elijah Sindelar 
in the sense that obviously David Blau was a more mobile uh, sort of guy, had some moxie to him, had some ability to make plays outside of his system. Elijah Sindelar was more of the big armed drop back sort of guy. I think Austin Burton profile wise, at least is much more David Blau than he is Elijah Sindelar. Um, at the very least, what this does is this gives Purdue another entry into its quarterback mix. Obviously, Purdue was not lacking for competition there. To begin with, Jack Plummer and Aiden O'Connell both played last season, both did some positive things at one time or another. We're going to battle it out for the job uh, this year, and I think Purdue, had it had to choose from those two guys, I think would have been okay with that. If they wanted... I know when the season ended, they wanted to add an established veteran, somebody who'd proven themselves at the college level, whether or not Austin Burton is that player. His resume to this point does not suggest that he is, but I do know at one point in time, Purdue would have liked to have brought in an established guy. Um, did not happen then. At the very least, Austin Burton gives them another entry into their quarterback competition. I think that's good for everybody. Uh, I, I do think one of the most important points I can make here is that just because Purdue added a transfer quarterback does not mean that that transfer quarterback is the solution uh, to whatever concerns it may have at the position. This is a player who has yet to meet his coaches face-to-face. -face. His coaches have yet to meet him. It is April. Who knows when he's even going to get to campus. He's a quarterback. If he arrived at Purdue today, and went through the whole a whole traditional summer, it would be enough of a challenge for him to learn an offense and be able to hit the ground running in August. That would be a colossal challenge unto itself. Now, he's not graduating UCLA until July. No one knows when anybody's coming to campus. No one knows when anyone's practicing. No one knows if there's going to be a season. And it's just a very unique circumstance, a very daunting challenge he's going to be stepping into in terms of his learning curve uh, to actually – get a grasp on Purdue's offense, let alone enough of a grasp of Purdue's offense to uh, credibly challenge for the starting position right away. I do think quarterback play is crucial for Purdue. It is what they are. It is what they aspire to be. Purdue is going to be a downfield passing team, a big play sort of offense as long as Jeff Brom is here. That is their MO. Quarterback is critical to that, obviously. Uh, but also, I think you potentially have a one-year window here of Rondell Moore and David Bell on the same team uh, that you want to maximize. And those guys, really good receivers, are only as good sometimes as what's getting them the ball. And I think Purdue needs um, really good quarterback play in 2020 here. Um, in whatever shape 2020, the 2020 season takes, uh, to be as good as they want to be. And uh, whether Austin Burton is part of the solution there, time will obviously tell, but it is going to be a, it is going to be a challenge for him, obviously, at this stage of the calendar uh, to come in and be able to learn Purdue's offense in a way where he can credibly go out there and have an opportunity to really credibly challenge for that position. How many times can I say credibly in a span of like five sentences? Um, in the big picture, you know, when you look at college football the last couple of years, Jalen Hurts at Oklahoma, Justin Fields at Ohio State, Joe Burrow obviously at LSU, Jared Stidham at Auburn a couple of years ago. Uh, there's somebody I'm forgetting here who left Clemson and went somewhere. Uh, I'm forgetting somebody really prominent, but the transfer quarterback is kind of kind of the path nowadays in a lot of ways. It's a very viable kind of way to do things. Uh, I think the graduate transfer market obviously has is taking over football not taking it over, but it's becoming a significant part of it the way it did for basketball a few years earlier it will probably be more of a part of football than it is basketball because so many people in football redshirt and there's just going to be more options there. More people oversign, more people need to move seniors out. It's just going to be a natural uh, evolution of things for football for that to become an even bigger part of the recruiting wire uh, for college football. But it's also going to be especially evident at quarterback. Why? Because A, it's the most ambitious um, position on the field. It's the one that's the most playing time driven. And B, you can only put one of them on the field at a time. Every quarterback who's recruited out of high school looks at himself as a starter, looks at what's ahead of him, looks at how he 
what reasonable path there is for him to have a starting job. The guys who don't look at it like that are the exception, not the rule. The really high-end quarterbacks, that, that's what they look at. They look at opportunity. You want to know, when is this team going to be my team? And when they get to college and things don't work out as they anticipated, that has always been the position that is really most susceptible to transfers because you get behind the wrong guy and you're stuck. And you, there's only one guy on the field at any point in time. It's not like a defensive lineman where, hey, he's got to come out of the game, so I'm going to get in the game. That's not always necessarily reality of quarterbacks. So I think when a really high-level kid goes to one school, maybe doesn't get his chance, one coaching staff puts a lot of time into coaching and developing that kid deals with all the BS that comes with having freshmen adjusting to college, you know, potentially girlfriend problems, whatever it may be. That stuff gets out of their system for somebody else. You get them as a junior, suddenly you get the best of them, and they have some experience behind them as well. It, it, it's a viable path nowadays, and I've, I've said before, it's a path where if Purdue doesn't get its next guy out of high school and develops that player into that guy, it, it's a perfectly viable path for Purdue because Jeff Brom should be a draw uh, on the transfer market for quarterbacks because you would think they can make a very compelling case with the talent they're bringing at wide receiver, with his expertise at the quarterback position, with Brian Brom's expertise at the quarterback position, the NFL backgrounds of both. That could be a very attractive situation for a free agent quarterback looking for the perfect situation, uh, provided things line up in terms of what Purdue has at the time, provided there's that opportunity there. In the case of Austin Burton, there is an opportunity. It's not a guarantee uh, because he has two players who have actually played in games at Purdue there along with him, uh, but it certainly does make things a little bit more interesting. So that's what I got on Austin Burton, Purdue's new quarterback, uh, the transfer from UCLA. So this has been your goldenblack.com daily quarantine simulcast. Um, Brought to you by Fox Purdue Bookstores, Purdue Federal Credit Union, the Sixth Street Dive Restaurant, First Source Bank, East End Grill, and the Charters Team Remax Ability Plus. I want to remind you, as always, too, the Sixth Street Dive Restaurant in Lafayette, uh, Arnie's all over the place, Bruno's in West Lafayette, and the Whitaker Inn in West Lafayette remain open for carrot orders. So please keep them in mind if you're looking for dinner or you just want to support our local businesses. So... I am working ahead. That's why I'm wearing the same shirt in Tuesday's video as I was in Monday's uh, video, my business casual attire, as I like to call it. Uh, so you won't see me again till Wednesday. Uh, hopefully the walls behind me will be a different color or at least a better shade of whatever color that is uh, with the white primer and the yellow uh, doing battle back there. Uh, but I can't make any guarantees. I'll, I'll have that done. But until then, Wednesday, we'll see you then. Thanks everybody for watching. Thanks for listening and uh, take care.